Just let me have your blessing and do what you want me to do. God, I give you all glory. I give you praise. Is in the name of your darling son, Jesus, I do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
brothers, we have to hope against hope. And despite our pains and the doctor's report or the stack of bills piling up on the table, with all of this evidence before us, we see we still cling to hope that things can be better and things will be different. You see, Romans 15, 13 is a wonderful prayer Paul wants every believer to experience. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you read a verse like that, you must, you must ask yourself, does this verse even come close to describing me? Do I have hope? Do you have hope? Or do you just soak your hands and can't do it? What are we doing? Let's tell the truth, shame the devil. Mm. At times, we do throw up our hands. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I'm stepping on my own foot. That's why I pull the shoes off. Because before I can preach it to you, God preaches it to me. And I go, I throw up all the time. I can't do this. I can't do that. Does this verse describe you? Can I honestly say that my life is filled with all joy? and peace and believing, can you? Do I abound in hope? And since we all tend to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt in these matters, I need to ask, what would our family, what would your best friend describe as you being filled with joy and peace and believing and abounding in hope? Now, as I looked at the rows of books that was on the shelf, it wasn't like any books, so I could use book in. The first book I picked up was Joy. James 1 2 admonishes us. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various crimes. Therefore, we also look at John 16 24 tells us, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. I have to put joy back on the shelf because I got gotten what I needed from joy. The second book is shelf with the title Peace. John 14, 27, you are used to hear this at a funeral, but it's not always in a funeral because you get peace from 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yeah. Romans 5, 1 states, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And Romans 15, 33, and, Paul, and, and Romans 16, 20, Paul describes this person of hope as a God also of peace. He gives perfect peace to his people. To varying degrees, we all fall short of experiencing that verse. So we can all benefit by thinking about it means by what it means and how we can grow in these qualities. I can't imagine anyone saying, I'm not interested in having joy and peace. I want joy and peace every day. Yeah. Peace when I get up in the morning. Yeah. Joy when I walk around through the day. Yeah. Joy when I get up and walk into my house. Yeah. Joy when I have to lay out in my bed and know that I can flip the, flip the TV on and look at the TV all night long. That's joy.
Because what Paul was doing, Paul didn't have no kind of education. He see right now, yeah, we are going back to school to get our master's and our doctorate and all that. I just like school. Come on. I don't care what I get. I love school. Amen. No denying. And so that's what Paul is in. Paul, and let me just explain it to us, in chapter 15, is a doctrinal truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you this. How mm -hmm. can hope be your bookend? Hmm. Think about it. Mm -hmm. How can hope be your bookend? Mm. Now I'm looking at you, you're a young man. You're married and you've got a child. Mm -hmm. Or maybe children. Everything you want is basically right there before you. Amen. But then look around at the elderly people that's in here. That's worked for all their life and struggled to make ends meet. Now they're on social security. The medicine and their medication is so high they can't afford the medication. Mm -hmm. But don't give up hope, sis. Come on. Do not give up hope. And don't give up on God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, although I was not present when Paul wrote this letter, I can almost imagine him. I can almost imagine Paul just holding his head in his hand and whispering that prayer. And that's what Paul did. Paul is Paul's hope for the readers. It's Paul's hope for the church. And verse 13, he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And here's my point. May the God of hope, may the God of hope, this is the point. If we walk to raise with this, praise the Lord. God is both the source of hope mm -hmm. and our supplier of hope. You see that right, you saw this right out of the starting gate. Y'all didn't have to go to Kentucky Derby or the Belmont State. You didn't have to bet on a horse. horse. Bet on God. All right. He is your host. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. You can see right out of that when Paul said that statement, he is declaring something about the very essence and nature of God. God is just not the inspirer of hope. He offers hope. Come on. He better just do out of hope. Right. He is trying the essence of who uh -huh. he is. In the book of Titus 2, the apostle Paul said, In the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time, but he promised to do these things, he will do them. These promises he has placed over your life and spoken over you and to you, these things will happen. His son will return. You really are not condemned in Christ Jesus. You really are forgiven and cleansed. You really but can be made whole, you really will receive a reconciled and fully redeemed and resurrected body. Yes, all uh, this will happen just in the fact that you gave your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just as you know that young man did. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> when Paul talks about joy, which he uses more than any other author in the New Testament, 21 times the Apostle Paul is going to speak of joy, 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 joy. Yeah. This is the mark of the Christian joy. When he's talking about, when he talks about joy, he's talking about an inward satisfaction of the soul. He's not talking about a bubbly personality like I have. That I got a bubbly personality. That don't mean that my personality is going to give you joy. Amen. Mm -hmm. My personality may set you on fire. Amen. You know what I'm saying? But the joy that God gives us is the joy that just keeps you jumping on the inside when that spirit comes upon you. Amen. He is the God and I am not, and I am. We are his sons and daughters. He's praying that people of God will be filled with joy and with peace. And these two things work together. And peace, he's not talking about the inward satisfaction of the soul. Uh, he not, he's not talking about the inward satisfaction of the soul. Okay. The deepest growth, again, of a Christian woman is hope in God. And it yields a strong tree of fearlessness in the face of suffering. A woman in Christ knows her Bible. Ladies, do you pick your Bible up? Preach. Do you pick it up? Preach. I'm not chastising you. God knows I'm not chastising you. Because I know, you know, the best sleeping pill. You can never be 
Lord by remembering those who endured tough times mm -hmm. before us and by taking a long range view. If we think about the women of St. John who have been here before us, on whose shoulders you are now standing, Come on. it's because of those women. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know who y'all have in Bible, the ones who sweated in the kitchen, or sweated and brought the food out doors under the tree that y'all should cut down. But those women <laughs> sacrificed time Talent. Their little pennies the husband gave them to make sure y'all had fried chicken and potato salad. Come on. Am I right about it? I'm telling you that it is. And Nancy, they ain't coming up to Shiloh doing Hong Kong. Am I right about that, Nancy? Right? So she knew what that chicken and potato salad was all about. Amen. Amen. It takes time for a shoot to grow into a new tree. All it takes is one blossom of hope to make these spiritual bodies. The working here, the work of that is in that phase, in believing. What the Apostle Paul is saying, if you follow the thread through the book of Romans, and believing means that you have placed your love and trust, you have placed your confidence and your faith in the one who sent to redeem and reconcile you. you do, do you know who I'm talking about? Who is it? Who am I talking about? But it's Jesus Christ. Go ahead, Shirley. You can't tell me who about it. Huh? Children know. <laughs> when Paul was at what Paul had been on and off through the book of Romans is, although we are condemned, God made a way. How you may ask. Through his son Jesus Christ. Although we were condemned, although we were without hope, God himself sent his son to reconcile lost sinners. Even while you were sinners, Christ died for us. Come on. This phrase in believing is you and me putting our belief, our trust, our confidence, and our hope in the one who has been reconciled, who has reconciled us. The one who died in our place. Mm -hmm. Paul again says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So as you believe on the one in whom I sent, as you believe on the one who died on the cross for your sins, as you believe on the one who rose from the dead, as you believe in him, as you place your love and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit is at work within you, producing fruit of the Spirit. Then he goes on to say, so that, so that, the turning of prayer here is where Paul is going to outline the why behind the what. Mm -hmm. where, is he, where, where he's going to say, this is why I want this. This is why I'm praying you will be filled with joy and peace. Why? So that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Mm -hmm. You see, at this point, the prayer itself is bookend with hope. It begins with hope. May the God of hope abound you in love and, and hope. So I just want you to see what Paul in this beautiful one-line prayer is showing us. The God of hope is longing for us to abound in hope. How does that happen? He's saying, I'm praying you will fill, be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. And as you're filled with the fruit of the Spirit, and inward satisfaction and calmness of the soul, joy and peace happens. I pray it produces you a growing desire and hope in the Lord. And as you have a growing desire and abundance of hope in the Lord, it is producing in you more evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. All right. As you learn to see the Spirit work in your heart more and more, and as the fruit of the Spirit is giving evidence of this work in your heart, more and more producing joy, producing peace, satisfaction, kindness of the soul, that is producing an abundance of hope. The good news here today is about the one who supplies hope, is that he has an abundance supply of it. How good is it for you to hear on a Woman's Day morning like this when there's not one of us, male or female in here, who doesn't have hope? The good news for you is, hear this, is that God has hope for you, not just rationed out to you, but in lavish, abundant supply. As hope grows in you, and wells up in you, and spreads in you, he has more for you. As hope is small in you, and swivel in you, and you are parched without it, he's saying, I have it. I have it for you. Yeah. I am both the supplier and the source of hope, yeah. and my supply is abundant. The Apostle Paul prays this prayer for his people. It's a benediction and a prayer that I hope 
look, it's that this church has as well, that the God of hope mm -hmm. will fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in the power of the Spirit. This body, which may not be working properly, the sales aren't doing what they need to be doing. I know sometimes I can be cantankerous. I may be full of disease, but there's coming a day when all of that will be made right. Come on. There's coming a day all right. when all of these things will be right away. Uh -huh. There's coming a day when the king will all right. come back to the king and rescue fully and finally and forever. You may be able to capture some of the things peering to, to the beauty of the reality that he is a God of hope and that you and I may have misplaced hope. But even in the midst of our misplaced hopes, we have a God who forgives. Yes. He heals. Yes. He restores. He redeems. Yes. So those of you in here who are not believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm confident there are probably some among you today, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the body of Christ. Come on. You may be here with a family as you're here to celebrate Woman's Day. You may be here on the arms of a friend. For whatever reason you are here, you are meant to hear this word. Amen. You are meant to hear Amen. that God is the God of hope. Amen. You are meant to hear that the God of trials and tribulations Amen. you may go through. God is going to bring you. All right. Yeah. You may be here today trying to get the money is funny and your change is funny. Come on. But you know that you can call on God. Yeah. And he's going to supply all of your needs. All right. Because that's what he's trying to say. You may be here today. Don't have a pillow. Don't have a bed. Don't have a home. But God is going to see to it yeah. that you will be taken care of. Yeah. Trust in the Lord because I'm not Glory to God. Glory to God. Right now in this moment, I'm speaking to you. God himself is making his appeal through me. He's using a broken, messed up, dysfunctional vessel like me Come on. to make this appeal. If you notice, I'm not the tallest woman in this house. If you may notice, I don't have the best figure in this house. If you may notice, I don't have a weed hanging down my back. If you may notice, I don't cross at the teeth and I don't die in the eye. But I can tell you one right thing that in case you don't know, I got Jesus. And I don't need nothing else. Can be lifted, that you can be made whole 
invite you to a loving God, your creator, who loves you. He created you. He sent his son to die on the cross for you. He's offering you a righteousness that you and I could never earn. He's offering for you and I the love that the world cannot give you. Here's the deal. If it sounds too good to be true, it really is. You know, you hear it on some of the TV for 1995. You can get a spring, spring water, and that water's going to heal you and all this kind of stuff. They got that water out of they got that water out of a faucet of a rusty wet. And they try to sell it to you. And most people don't have to pay for 1995. You don't need to pay no money to be healed. You don't need to pay nobody the money to heal you. Go to the Bible. Read it. Meditate on it. Pray to God. Trust in God. Lean not to your own understanding. If you want healing, read healing scripture. If you want money, read for prosperity. Whatever you need, start looking those scriptures up. Put them on your refrigerator. Put them in the bathroom. Put them in the bedroom. Wherever you are, and just meditate on those scriptures. Meditate on the scriptures. And as my sister said, won't you do it? Yes, you will. Yeah. Won't you do it? Yes, you will. And that's the thing my sister always say, when you do it. What the, what the apostle Paul is saying in Romans chapter 5, in Romans 15, verse 13, is that the God of hope on that day, on that future day, the day that is coming, when you and I get to a better day, there will be no disappointments. There will be no regret. There will be no wishing it was more. There will be no more lying and lying of heart, a lying of soul, I think, in man. I just would have done this this way. I so wish I had worked this out this way. But that's not what we're supposed to do. You know something, church? This is not my church. But as believers, we all talk about with Christ. Yeah. And at this 